Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, we are going to start another very important topic related to Kafka and that is called Kafka Stream Processing. Okay, so what is Kafka Stream Processing? Let us try to understand first. So it is like reading the data from a particular Kafka topic in real time and then process the message or enrich the Kafka content and then writing it back to another Kafka topic. Okay, so the picture can be shown like this way. Here we are having our input stream, which is basically nothing but coming from a topic. Okay, maybe some producer or using Kafka Connect, we are ingesting data in this particular Kafka topic. From there, input stream is coming. What is the meaning of stream? It is like continuous flow of input data. Okay, and then here we have applied our transformation logic, which is enriching the content or filtering or doing a certain activity. And then it is not writing in some external location like when we studied the Kafka sync connector. That time we wrote the Kafka content in some external database or something. But in this case, what the Kafka stream processing framework will do that after transforming or enriching the input stream, the output stream, it will write in one particular Kafka topic only. From that Kafka topic using consumer or using Kafka sync connector, we can send the data in external world outside the Kafka cluster. Okay. So from Kafka topic after processing and then writing back to another Kafka topic in a continuous manner because the data will be coming in this input topic in real time. And from there in real time, this framework has to process the data and then write in another topic. So continuously, this particular transformation will be applied on our input stream, right? And that is what our Kafka stream processing does. Okay, there are several frameworks which does the same. Like for example, one very popular framework is Apache Spark stream processing. It is used by many companies in case of Spark structure streaming or etc. Then another very popular framework is Storm. Okay, then another one is Flink. Okay, like that, multiple frameworks are available which does this kind of real time stream processing. Okay. But today in this particular video, we are going to explore one Python based stream processing library first. Okay. So first is nothing but a Python based library and the advantage is along with stream processing, you can use all other Python based modules. Like for example, data operation, you need NumPy. You can use with first. Then you need pandas. Okay. Widely we use in data processing world. Then maybe you need, for example, PyTorch, right? This is also very popular module. Then apart from that, for natural language processing, suppose you are using an LTK. Or maybe, for example, you are using Flask for building a web application. Or maybe you are using Django, right? So all these Python-based modules you can utilize if you are using FOST for your stream processing. Okay, right? Just I have listed few. But all possible Python based modules you can utilize if you are using first based stream processing. Okay. So without any further delay, let's see how to do first based stream processing, which will read the data in real time from a Kafka topic. And then after processing or enriching the content, it will write back to another Kafka topic. How to do that? So this is the code. Okay. I will go through each and individual line. Obviously, you can explore much more from the documentation. I am going to cover only that part, which is very important with respect to this particular code so that you will be perfectly comfortable with first coding style in case of Kafka stream processing. Okay. So first, what we are doing here, we are importing first. So for that, what we need to do, we need to install a module for streaming in our environment. Okay. Then here, what we need to do, we need to create an app. Okay. The app name you have to give, it is having its own significance. I will come to that when I will show you the demonstration. As of now, you can understand like this way that here we have to define the application name. Like in Spark, we define the application name while creating the Spark session. Like that, you can think. Okay. Then here we need to provide the broker URL that is location of the broker. Like right? maybe you are using some remote server, etc. etc. So in that case, you have to specify the broker URL here. Okay. Now here you need to provide the input topic definition. That is from what topic the data will be consumed or input stream will be consumed. Okay. Like in this case, my input topic name is hello world. Reading the data from this topic. 
then you might need to define key serializer, value serializer, what type of data is coming. So that we are defining in the next arguments, value type equal to string, value serializer is raw. So that way we can start our exploration with normal string data and then eventually we can move ahead with JSON data or something. If you want to explore what are the other possible serializer or value type or key type are present, you can check the documentation link given in the description box. Okay, right. Now the next topic here, it comes the most important part, which is basically processing the input stream. So here you have to define a decorator. If you see, I have written the decorator to define async string processor. Okay, so first works in asynchronous manner. So obviously you can understand one thing. Because asynchronous technique came after Python 3.6 or later version. So if you want to use first, then you must have to use Python, which is having version greater than or equal to 3.6. Because here we are using async based technique, right? I hope up to this you are getting here. Just this decorator you have to mention with this particular topic details, what you have configured here, right? So this topic declaration from where the data will be consumed. Once you declare that, you have to use that one in the string processor. Okay, so you can think it is like a consumer. It is consuming the input stream and then processing it. And then instead of writing in some external world, it will write the processed content in Kafka only. That's the only thing. Okay, right. I hope you got it. And now here what we are doing, we are defining the function. Okay, so define processor. Processor is the function name and we are passing stream. Okay, so what is stream? Stream is basically infinite async iterable. Okay, iterable is nothing but using which you can iterate. Like you can write a code for i in that iterable object. If you want to print the content, you can print etc. etc. Right. So stream is similarly a iterable and it is infinite and asynchronous. It is basically consuming the messages from a particular Kafka topic or channel, and then we can iterate on top of that and perform some certain operation on the messages okay so you can think the stream like this way here this particular picture is showing like so here suppose we are having our kafka topic from the topic the input stream is coming and suppose the data is continuously getting appended in a table so that way it will be nothing but an unbounded table like we generally study in spark structure streaming similarly same thing you can think of here as stream it is nothing but infinite async iterable until and unless you iterate you cannot extract the message content like for example here in that stream i am iterating for message in stream so here this stream is basically consuming the messages from this topic and then it is helping us to iterate on that consumed messages and as in when the messages will be getting ingested by the producer or kafka source connector to this input topic in this stream also when we will iterate we can get the messages okay as of now because we are just starting the discussion on first so i am not doing any operation just i am printing the incoming messages in console okay but actually in real world scenario what we do once we iterate in the messages which is continuously flowing from the input stream and it will be continuously coming it will be a long running code obviously you can understand and then what will happen here we will write some processing logic or message enrichment logic etc and then after enrichment filtering join etc we will write that in a separate kafka topic okay so i hope you understood the foundation or basics of first stream programming now without any further delay let us directly jump into the implementation section or lab section okay right so here what i will do i will go to my pycharm here and I will open a terminal. I need to install some modules. So that modules, let me just show you. Okay. So here I will first go to my trusty notepad. And here I have written some code. So here if you see what I am doing first, I am starting the zookeeper. Okay. So let me start the zookeeper in this terminal only. And here I will start the zookeeper. Right. So here zookeeper will take some time to start. Let it run and I will open a new window and I will start my Kafka broker or Kafka server. Okay, so here using this code, I will start my Kafka server. This particular code already we discussed several times. I'm not going to that. So here if you see our Kafka broker will run by default in localhost 
colon 9092 port right even if you check the logs here you can see that socket connection is this this is nothing but localhost 9092 so we will define the same in our first streaming in the broker url okay right then the next step is we need to create a topic because in the code we have written the topic name from where it should consume the data is hello world so i am creating the topic with topic name hello world only okay right so here i will open a new tab and i will paste this code to create a topic using kafka topic bat file and here it has created the topic hello world perfect now let's go to the next step here what we are doing we are installing two modules one is pip install for streaming for first processing okay so here i will go to pycharm and i will paste that let it install and we will install kafka python also if it is required for next time when we will try to write the data or etc okay right so here if you see that it is downloading the first streaming dependencies we have to wait little bit so here it is done now the next step what i will do i will install kafka python okay so here it is installed and now what i will do i will paste my first code okay just now what we discussed that same thing i am pasting here so see here we are defining our broker which is running in localhost 9092 the application name we have given demo streaming okay topic name hello world because that's what we created string data will be passing and we will see whether in real time it is consuming the content it is like acting like a consumer or not okay so here asynchronous method we are using and here we have to use this decorator which is basically defining the agent agent is like you can think which is actually acting like a consumer consuming the data from input stream processing it and then the consumer generally write the content in external world but now this agent will write in some other kafka topic only within kafka cluster as simple as that okay you can write outside also but just to have relatable with kafka stream processing here you can think of agent like a kafka consumer okay right here we are just printing the messages now before going to that let me show you the log directory so here in f drive we have already set up our kafka log directory if i go to kafka logs here in server logs as of now you can see that only hello world hyphen zero folder is there hello world is the topic name hyphen zero is indicating only one partition is there right no other folder is there so now what i will do here i will start our first streaming okay so to start our first streaming the code you have to use like this way okay first hyphen a then here a stands for application so in our case the application name is demo streaming i will paste that okay paste here and then here worker l info okay so what is l info l info is basically indicating i want to print all the logs whatever is getting generated okay because now we are exploring the content of first right so that's the code so here i will copy this one and here i will go to my pycharm and then here i will paste that code okay first hyphen a demo streaming worker l info right so here demo streaming is not a valid identifier okay right so here actually it should be having the name of our python file name and here it is started and see it started now okay so what happened let me explain so here when you are writing your first starting your first code you have to give the python file name main.py and then here if you see that it is printing all the metadata information right here see pip installation host name and then all other details id id is basically demo streaming for this streaming application the application name is demo streaming so that's why it has given the id name as demo streaming okay right now let's see what other logs it is printing if i just scroll a little bit below here you will see that the topic names whatever existing in our this system that it is showing so hello world is the topic from where it will be consuming the data and this is basically another topic which our first has created internally demo streaming hyphen assigner leader so there it will store all the metadata let me show you in the log directory also it will be getting created so if you see here all the consumer 0 to consumer offset 49 these folders are also created and here you see another 
topic got created this topic will be used by our first only for metadata management don't hamper this topic and now without any further delay we can start producing messages and we can see whether it is consumed in first or not okay right so here what i can do i can open a comment prompt okay right and we can start publishing message in this comment prompt right so here i will just take the code for starting the producer i will copy that and here i will go to my comment prompt and paste that and i will hit an enter so here we will produce the messages from the comment prompt and we will see whether it is getting printed in this place or not okay so here this is our uh, terminal where actually the logs are getting printed okay so here what i will do i will first publish a message hello world okay we entered and see here it printed received hello world message because here we are printing received and then message content so it is showing like that way 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 like that in topic as and when messages are coming this particular first stream processing is consuming those and then printing the content okay we printed and see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so like that the messages as and when you will pass it will be consumed okay sample demo and see it is coming here perfect you can pass json data also because here we have kept the value serializer as string so it will also be consumed not a problem so see received hello world right so i hope you understood that first stream processing is consuming the content in real time and then doing now let's check the fail safe property also suppose for example what i can do i can close this particular code okay by simply pressing Control C. Now what I will do, I will publish some messages in it. Okay. So here this is my producer terminal, and then here I can publish some message. First message after a failure. Okay. Then second second one after fail. Okay. Test the app is fail safe or not like that here we have published three messages right now these messages are published when our first stream processor is down okay so now let's see when the first stream processor will again up after some time it should be consuming all the messages whatever got published when it was down like three messages all three messages should be consumed right let's observe that that way we can understand this framework is fail safe also okay see here this is the beauty here if you see first message after app failure here it received second one after fail test the app fail safe or not so all three messages when our first was down then whatever was published that also is it has consumed right and then again you if you start passing normal messages it will be starting consumption okay so this is very important part which in production system specially plays a major role because it is obviously not possible that once you start an application it will be running always without any failure but if it fails that's fine but it should be having fail safe property uh, that is where it stopped processing before failure after it spin up again it should start consuming the data from that position only it should not consume the same message again and again or process message again and again same message and similarly it should not miss any message also okay and how this is maintained basically that is maintained by this particular kafka topics okay which is basically created against one application in this application all the metadata information are stored that is up to this place the messages are consumed after that you start consuming next time when it is spinning up again in the consumer offsets it is committing the offsets in the back end parallelly so all these things are happening and that way our first application is becoming fail safe right i hope you understood the foundation of first stream processing in case of kafka this is all for my this video in my upcoming videos i will discuss more concepts related to first stream processing till then stay tuned and if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you